in Western foreign policy set the stage for him, as we have covered before. Recently, however, former President Donald Trump and his allies have been engaging in quite a bit of revisionist history about this matter. This is so sad because this would have never happened. If we had the Trump administration, there was no chance that this would happen. And I know him well. And this was not something that was going to happen at all. Trump, of course, failing to mention there his own actions and inactions that and that of his administration that may have enabled Putin in many ways, instead of calling out Russia's decades of invasion in Georgia 2008, annexing Crimea from Ukraine in 2014. Trump to this day seems to find room to believe Putin, even praise him as a genius, quote unquote, genius for the brutal attack. Even some of Trump's former advisors wonder if his approach may have empowered the Russian president on the world stage. As the world watches Russian tanks rolling into Ukraine, a clearer picture comes into focus. Not only about Vladimir Putin's willingness to slaughter innocents in the name of restoring the old Soviet empire, but also... I would love to be able to get along with Russia. ...about how our former president consistently sent signals that he was not on Ukraine's side, he was on Putin's. On the very day Trump announced his presidential run in 2015, he made this clear. I was over in Moscow two years ago, and I will tell you, you can get along with those people and get along with them well. You can make deals with those people. Obama can't. The way he denigrated allies and spoke favorably uh, of Putin and of other authoritarians around the world kind of gave a clear signal both to American allies in the West and to Russia whose side this man would be on if he were in the White House. Trump said he would be looking into lifting sanctions against Russia for having annexed Crimea. And he seemed to buy Putin's argument that Russia's first military assault on Ukrainian sovereignty, taking Crimea in 2014, was not such a big deal. You know, the people of Crimea, from what I've heard, would rather be with Russia than where they were. That wasn't the issue. The issue was that it was annexed illegally against all international laws. Paul Manafort, Trump's second campaign chairman, had close ties to Russia. Paul Manafort has done an amazing job. Manafort was a lobbyist for a Russian-backed Ukrainian president for roughly a decade and was paid in part by Russian oligarchs, according to a 2020 Senate Intelligence Committee report. During Manafort's time as campaign chair, the campaign pushed sometimes bizarre and seemingly random disinformation that could have been written by the Kremlin. You had the NATO base in Turkey being under attack by terrorists. Uh, uh, you had a number of things that, that were appropriate to this campaign. We're part of what Mr. Trump has been talking about. And when the Republican National Committee's 2016 platform proposed to provide lethal defensive weapons to Ukraine in the face of the Russian threat, that language was quickly tabled and softened, promising only appropriate assistance once Manafort and Trump's team got involved. That was a big victory for the Russians, and it underscored their sense that they were going to really win big if Trump won the White House, that they would have a ma major ally in the White House. Trump denied any direct involvement with the change of platform language. I wasn't involved in that. Honestly, no, I was not involved. Yeah, I was not involved in that. Once in office, Trump pushed the notion that the U.S. had moral equivalence with Russia even as perceived opponents of the Kremlin kept ending up dead or poisoned. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We got a lot of killers. Why, well, you think our country's so innocent? Trump argued Russia should be given back its seat within the powerful G7 summit, even though its membership had been revoked as punishment for attacking Ukraine. I would rather see Russia in the G8 as opposed to the G7. I would say that the G8 is a more meaningful group than the G7. Absolutely. You have Trump lining up very clearly with Russia. You have him at a meeting with G7 leaders telling them, just forget about Ukraine. Ukraine is, is Russian. Let it go. And of course, the day after Trump fired FBI Director James Comey amid the investigation into possible coordination between Russia and the Trump campaign, the then president met with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and ambassador to the U.S. Sergei Kislyak where Trump revealed highly classified information to the pair. We had a very, very good meeting with uh, Mr. Lavrov, and it was uh, 
I thought it was very, very good. Special counsel Robert Mueller's report found that Manafort and short-lived National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who had been paid by Russian entities to attend and speak at this 2015 gala, where he literally dined with Putin, together pushed the nonsensical conspiracy theory that it was Ukraine, not Russia, that had meddled in the 2016 election. And don't forget, Ukraine hated me. They were after me in the election. They wanted Hillary Clinton to win. A prelude to the events that paved the way to Trump's first impeachment. In summer 2019, Trump ousted his ambassador to Ukraine at a critical time. Fighting had continued in the East with separatists backed by Russia's might and Ukraine was in desperate need of support from the U.S. Ukraine is in a war with, U- with Russia and the security assistance that we provide Ukraine is significant. Absent that security assistance and maybe even more importantly, the signal of support for Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity that would likely encourage Russia to pursue, to potentially escalate, to pursue further aggression. Weeks later, Trump had his now infamous call with the newly elected Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, where Zelensky asked for more anti-tank javelins to protect his country from the Russian threat. And Trump followed up with a request of his own. Trump wanted Ukraine, in exchange for that aid, to help him in his re-election campaign by announcing an investigation into Joe Biden, the Democratic presidential candidate Trump feared the most, according to his aides, and into Biden's son, Hunter, who had a lucrative and ethically dubious position on the board of a Ukrainian gas company. It's just this yet another way in which Trump very openly sided with Putin and dismissed the concerns and the needs of an important U.S. ally. Trump was being pushed behind the scenes by Defense Secretary Mark Esper, among others, to give the desperately needed military aid. And eventually Zelensky did get the weapons he asked for and an in-person meeting with Trump, though not the one he wanted in the Oval Office. We need support, real support. And uh, we thank uh, thanks everybody. Trump and his supporters today note that unlike during the administrations of Bush and Obama, Putin never invaded any country during the Trump years, which is true. Though Russia did significantly ramp up its military presence in Syria. But former Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton said there could be a reason for that. In a second Trump term, I think he may well have withdrawn from NATO. And I think Putin was waiting for that. That signal had certainly been sent. Number one, NATO is obsolete. It's obsolete, and we pay too much money. They are delinquent. NATO is obsolete and has to be rejiggered. You had candidate Trump talking in this way, saying that NATO was obsolete, that he wanted to get along with Russia, that Russia was a superpower that we should take seriously and respect. I mean, that was music to Putin's ears. Behind closed doors, White House aides had to convince Trump to stand by NATO, according to The New York Times. I had my heart in my throat at that NATO meeting. I didn't know what the president would do. Uh, He called me up to his seat seconds before he gave his speech, and I said, look, go right up to the line, but don't go over it. It is a line Bolton fears would have been crossed if Trump had been reelected. 